We played with her for a couple of hours and she got worse. So at midnight, we sent for the Assemblies of God pastor in the town, in the city. And he got out of bed and came down. And at four o'clock in the morning, the poor girl was still saying, we never did get her released from divine power. We took her to Teen Challenge in the end. And I went away thinking, God, why, why couldn't we do it? I, there are very, there's probably lots of reasons now, but at the time. A few weeks later, are you glad you came this morning? Absolutely. Yeah. A few weeks later, a lady came into my church, was brought to my church, and she said, go on, look at me, and ran out to the door up the street, which is the effect I had on quite a few people <laughs> I discovered. So I'm glad you stayed this morning. One or two have gone, I noticed. They brought it back, and I said, what, what, why, why did you run out? And you know what she said to me? So my friends don't like you. And it was as if Steve God switched on a revelation in my mind. And I knew that there were demons with her. I said, what are your friends' names? And she told me, I can't remember now, there were three of them. And without even thinking about it, I simply said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command your friends to let me go and to leave you. And there was like a pop, pop, pop. She shook her head. And she said, where are they? What have you done with my friends? And they gone. Like that. And we ministered to that lady for some months, to be honest with you. Very deep, psychological, mental, spiritual problems. God, eventually she was set free. The next day after that, I went into my church, into the same room where we'd done the business before, to put on the boiler for that night's meeting. I was on my way to a funeral. I was even wearing a clerical collar at the time. And when I went to up, lift the trap door, something attacked me, wiped the floor from underneath me. You can believe this or not, I don't care. And I fell from one ceiling down to the next and ended up in casualty. I never did get to the funeral. And I realized then, this is not something you mess around with. It's not something you go looking for. But thank God this morning, Jesus Christ is Lord. All power is given unto him in heaven, in earth, and even under the earth. And that opened up years and years of ministry in what we call the deliverance ministry. Uh, I could keep you here all day. But Jesus is Lord. Amen. He's Lord over addictions, he's Lord over alcohol, he's Lord over drugs, he's Lord over all sorts of sexual addictions, etc. Amen? Amen? He sets people the truth. I, I really need to finish it. There was believers' baptism. I love believers, I love baptismal services because they bring great joy. The truth brought joy, the miracles brought joy. Baptism, the demons being cast out, brought great joy to people. People being baptized. I love baptismal services because I know people are obeying the Lord. You don't have to pray about it. Just get baptized. And your church is growing. Because it's all new converts. And then lastly, say amen. Amen. You miserable bunch. <laughs> <laughs> they sent Peter and John down from Cheltenham, from uh, Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> lay hands on the new converts because it says they had been baptized in water Steve, but they had not been baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit now I don't know who I'm talking to this morning but I am determined in our church we're getting lots of new people coming in we've had two or three very successful Alpha groups meeting and, and some new, brand new Christians Thank God coming in. I am determined that every new person coming to our church understands that when they get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live within them. And thank God this morning, if you're a converted person, the Holy Spirit is living in you. But there is another experience where not only does the Spirit live within us, He empowers us. He is released within us. He comes upon us and we're baptized, if you like, in the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, 
when this happens to you, you will receive power to be a witness for me here in Jerusalem and all over the world. And for goodness sake, when you get baptized in the Spirit, get the whole package deal and, and get the, the gift of speaking in tongues and all that side of it as well. Steve will tell you all about this. In chapter 2, they were all baptized in the Spirit lost my thinking now. In chapter 8, where we've just come, a group of despised people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. In chapter 9, a very cruel man called Saul of Tarsus got saved, and he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. In chapter 10 of Acts, a man called Cornelius, a Roman centurion, got baptized in the Holy Ghost. In chapter 19 of the Acts, a group of people in Ephesus got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you something, great joy Fill the hearts. Lord, let your joy fill this church. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Tremendous truth. Jesus sets people free. That brings joy. Miraculous, mighty miracles. That brings joy. Divine deliverance. Thank God. Joy. Being baptized, obeying the Lord. Joy. And the power of the Holy Spirit. That's my time, Steve. And it's been great to be here. And, and I, you know, I, I know God's doing something in this church. You do? Yeah. Yes. I think I might, when I retire, retire properly. I might come and join you here. <laughs>